Hello and welcome everybody to this um, session on Mahara 21.10, the new features um, highlights for this latest version of Mahara that the team at Catalyst released uh, last Friday on the 29th of October 2021. And um, if you have been in the Mahara community for, for a long time now, you will know that our version numbers indicate the year 2021 and the month 10 for October, in which um, the version of Mahara was released, making it very, um, easier to see um, when a version came out and also for you then to know how long it is being supported. So 2021 is going to be supported until April 2023 because we always have 18 months of support. And my name is Christina Hopner. I work at Catalyst IT and am the Mahara project lead for the open source project and uh, look forward to sharing some of the new features with you today. I've kind of um, called this version of Mahara an integration version because the the biggest changes in Mahara that um, we, we have put in as a proof of concept are around integrating between learning management systems and Mahara. So kind of having a technical integration point, making a number of um, regular tasks easier because they are just done automatically. And so what I'd like to do today is take you through some of those new features that you can see in this latest version of Mahara. And as always, um, if you cannot yet upgrade to this version, for example, because you're upgrading during the Northern Hemispheric summer, then there is typically the possibility also to backport um, these features to your instance, it would need to be, or to your version of Mahara, it would need to be looked into specifically what you are interested in, because of course some features are smaller than others. Um, but uh, I, pretty much all the ones that we are going to talk about today uh, can be made available in older versions in particular, especially if you were to be on Mahada 21.04, but possibly also 20.10 uh, from last October. So if you do want to have any of those, please feel free to get your development team on that to backport them to your version of Mahada or um, contact us and we can also assist with that. But before we can actually get into these new features, I would very much like to thank um, everybody who's participated in this release and actually made it possible. And here you see all the organizations that contributed in um, providing new features, um, thinking about new features and providing funding to have them implemented um, or um, implemented themselves and uh, pushed any of those changes back to the Mahara core project so that now everybody can use those features. And so I'd like to thank in particular the Australian National University, Cambridge Assessment, Carlton University. Um, at Catalyst, we've also put in a bunch of features and um, fixed bugs. Uh, D2L, Griffith College in Ireland, Learning Works here in Aotearoa, New Zealand, Midstech in Japan, Open EDU in the Netherlands, Open LMS, Pharmacy Council in New Zealand, uh, Switch in Switzerland, and Visol also in uh, Switzerland. And I forgot to mention Carlton University is of course in Canada. Besides those organizations that contributed new features or had bug fixes commissioned or new features commissioned, um, we also have a number of people work on Mahara throughout the year. And those are in particular our translators who make Mahara available in a number of languages. So big thank you also to them, as well as everybody else who is kind of working in the back office, um, 
at organizations to make sure that um, infrastructure is running and therefore a big shout out also in particular to our system administrators here at Catalyst um, who make sure that our sites are up and running, our code review system works and everything else as well that we need in order to communicate with all of you. This release, as already mentioned very briefly in the beginning, um, kind of focuses on the proof of concept implementation of LTI Advantage. And um, we focused on kind of more of the backend implementations, this, uh, this version, whereas in Mahara 2104, we had a lot of new features that supported learners in particular that brought new features for the portfolio creation process and portfolio management process. This time around, we have some more of the administrative features that help um, maintain an instance of Mahara, know where things are at, and then in particular also um, connected to a learning management system. But before we go into that big new LTI Advantage feature, I'd like to show you some of these smaller ones because um, they, they are nonetheless also very, very important. And so, since we do also have a developer here in, um, amidst us, I'd like to start with a um, couple of the developer features that would be of interest. And um, those are now in that new menu item, which can be found in the administration menu and then below web services and development and BHEAD steps. So BHEAD is our automation test suite, which makes it possible for you to automatically test things in Mahara without you needing to sit there and run through all those test scripts. So what do I mean with that? Um, let me show you an example. And all of those test scripts are available um, directly in the code base. So you can go to them and even read them. So what I wanted to show you is just what some of those tests can look like. And we've, we've had we had tests for um, for quite a number of years already. And we run them every single time that we commit something into our code repository to ensure as best as possible that we don't break any other areas of Mahara. Um, and therefore we have a lot of uh, scripts already available, but there can always be more written. And so here just a script for you, which is very readable, um, which says, and uh, so here we are copying a page directly from its location, and it says, and I display the page, and I press more options, and I follow copy, and I press save, and I display the page, and I should see the page title, and I should see tags block page and two. Now, if you copy a page, it says, and I choose, and I press, and I click, and I press, and I should. So it's kind of readable English, but very formulaic English. And that really helps to automate that testing. Because with normal PHP unit tests, um, one does need a developer to, or typically developer background, some, some sort of thing, um, to, um, write those tests, but these BHEAD tests can also be written by somebody who does not have a developer background because they are using more natural language. But as you can see, it is very formulaic. So what we have done is cre essentially create a page within the Mahara administration area where all of those formulaic phrases are gathered making it easier for, for anybody wanting to write those behead steps to know what can be used. Um, we've had that kind of already in the code base, but there it's quite hidden. And now having that available directly in Mahara, you can then click on one of those and I choose, for example, and you see all the instances 
in which files um, that particular phrase has been used and the question mark indicates that some text can be added there. So here for example in the feature add or delete comments it says and I choose dashboard from main menu um, or shared by me it says again and I choose dashboard um, and typically in this case it is and I choose dashboard. If you're looking for something else um, and I check, there you can have and I check group, when I check registered people and I check registered people. So that then also helps you to go directly to those BHAT files, look at the line and then see the context so that you can check out well what is actually being done there, helping you to create your own tests. And you're very welcome to write your own tests. Um, so if you have specific scenarios that you're testing over and over and over and over again manually, every single time there's an upgrade, you can often write those behead tests and just automate that for yourself. And then know, yes, it is being run through and you don't have to look at it again manually. Um, there are a couple of areas that are pretty tough to test with BHAT and that unfortunately is integrations with the learning management system because of course BHAT only knows Mahara um, and it can also typically not really test whether notifications are received via email because um, BHAT doesn't have access to your email account. But you can kind of test all the other things around it and therefore cut down tremendously on your testing effort. So I'd definitely encourage you to check that out. And um, with BHEAD you would not be testing your database, um, you would be testing your code base. Therefore that can also be run locally on, on a developer computer if your IT department says well we don't really want to run that on the server. So if you have any questions for that, um, please do let me know. And if you work with Moodle, you might already be familiar with it because Moodle also has uh, quite an extensive BHAT test suite. But now let's take a look at some of the other exciting features. Uh, new things for in the developer area are also the components library. Um, that's not really as much as a feature but more for transparency purposes because here you see listed all the third-party plugins that Mahara makes use of, um, their current version that we're using in this version of Mahara, and then also the link to the project itself. So if you have any questions or want to follow up on something or file a bug with that library, then you can very easily go to that. And another super helpful tool, especially if you have your own theme on your site, is the style guide. The style guide shows you um, kind of all the, the visual elements, or let's say the majority of the visual elements. Um, there, there might be a few a couple of buttons missing here, there, or icons, but all the visual elements that we are using around the site so that you can see, well, what should a default button look like? What does the primary button look like um, when I'm hovering over it, when I'm not hovering over it? Um, what do my tables look like, drop-down menus or profile pictures and things like that. And the really cool thing there is now when I switch my theme to a different one, let's go with modern. And I open the style guide again then the entire style guide will be displayed using those theme colors. So again, here my primary button, my default button, um, navigation elements, models, what they look like when they come out, um, what cards look like, what tables look like, and so on. So that is a really nice way to also quickly check here what should all of these elements look like on other pages because the implementation here in the style guide is the same as on the other pages in Mahara. Therefore, 
making it easy to, um, on one page to check a lot of the visual elements without needing to go through every single of those pages, giving you already more confidence that um, your theme is uh, going to work. And so that also works with all the custom themes because it um, hooks into that and displays the style guide in the theme that you have selected for your site. And so that style guide had already existed in Mahara for quite a while. You might have discovered it in the menu, but now we've actually put a menu item to it to make it easier to find. Um, another um, administrative feature is if you were to work with a multi-tenanted Mahara site, um, so far it was always the case that notifications that were sent via the contact us link if it used the form that we provide in Mahara. If anybody sent a message through here, it would only go to the site administrators. And so imagine a large site with lots of universities. The site administrator does not necessarily know what's happening in course um, electrical engineering 101 at university one compared to university two, and therefore always needed to pay, um, play operator and send those emails on to, to the actual institution administrators. And so no more of that, because if an institution member is logged into their account and they send a message via the built-in contact us form, then it goes to the institution administrators. So here we've got new contact us from James and Percy, and it goes directly to the institution administrator rather than the site administrator, making it much, much quicker to, to get responses from people. But of course, that only works if you are using the built-in form. Um, if you redirect that link to your own support website, then your workflow is already handled by that. Now, one feature that I think as uh, some of you are also looking forward quite a bit is that you can now set up smart evidence frameworks also within groups, meaning you can add a smart, you have a group collection and you can add a smart evidence framework to the group when the institution to which the group belongs allows smart evidence. So that is really handy when you set up templates because smart evidence remains a tool for individuals to work in their personal portfolios with. Um, so when you, when you add a competency framework to a collection in a group, it is there really only for the, um, for the template creation. So let's add a new person into my group because everybody else has already received it. And so what I can now do is I can share that portfolio with all group members and automatically also copy it into the accounts. Um, that copying functionality has already been in Mahara for a while. And now if I go and find my group member, and log in. Then they received the portfolio and also have the competency framework right at the start of their collection and can start working with it. Because before you always needed to add that manually um, into, into your portfolio. So we cut down on some of those restrict, uh, some of those additional um, instructions again. And the last feature that I wanted to share with you before going to the bigger one is that in the export, you can now distinguish between public comments and private comments. 
Um, so it's always been possible to include comments, uh, always, well, for the very last, many last few years, it's been possible to include comments when you export your portfolio. Um, but what we hadn't done was actually distinguish between private and public comments. So if you exported your portfolio with comments, then the private comments would also come along um, and therefore potentially exposing them to others if you shared that portfolio with somebody, somebody else. Um, but if you wanted to keep those comments private, you didn't have any possibility to do that. And now you do, because you can decide whether you want to create an export with private comments or without private comments, giving you more flexibility in that area to decide um, whether you want to share them all with other people or not. Do you have any questions for any of these features that I've shown you so far? Nothing so far. Thanks. Thanks, Ellie. Then I think can continue to the next part, which is LTI Advantage. Uh, sometimes also called LTI 1.3 Advantage because it is part of that LTI 1.3 upgrade. Up to now, Mahara supported LTI 1.1. And we continue to support that because that is the implementation that we are using for Moodle and all the other learning management systems. LTI Advantage is a, um, goes into Mahada currently as, um, as an experimental feature, as a kind of proof of concept, um, because at the moment it is only, uh, we've, we've only done testing on one learning management system, and that is Brightspace. And um, the other learning management systems will still need a bit of work because while LTI is supposed to be a standard and implemented the same in every learning management system and every tool, it does seem like everybody does things slightly differently. And so we just need to do a bit more testing on um, especially Moodle um, or Totra and then also see how we can set things up in Canvas and whether everything just works directly out of the box or if there are a few additional changes or um, things that we, that we need to do slightly differently. So one, one example that we've seen is uh, that in Brightspace, we can get um, different de so-called deployment IDs for the diff three different services that LTI Advantage can help us with, whereas in Moodle, there is only one. And so we'll need to work out, well, how does that impact any of the, the services and functionalities that we do want to use and what does that mean for links and so on. And so right now, when we are talking about LTI Advantage at the moment, please keep in mind if you're using Moodle. Um, hold on, we will get there and um, make it also possible for, use it, um, for using it there. And right now, I would like to showcase uh, that new functionality using Brightspace. And so, and in a number of ways, really, um, Moodle can already do two of the things that we are doing with LTI Advantage because it can do the authentication from Moodle into Mahara or any other learning management system into Mahara. And it can also do the assignment submission. Um, there, of course, the default possibility with external tools is quite cumbersome because the grade would be given in Mahara rather than the LMS. And that is where Moodle has the Mahara Assignment Submission plugin, which allows you to submit a Mahara portfolio directly into a Moodle assignment and use all your normal grading methods there rather than needing to push a grade from LTI in. And so what we are achieving with LTI Advantage is also the, the transfer of the account, or 
sorry, the, the authentication from, from Brightspace into Mahara and also a more comfortable way of grading portfolios because with the deep link functionality available in LTI Advantage, we can use a regular assignment in Brightspace, link to link the Mahara portfolio submission in there, and then also use the regular grading methods in, in Brightspace uh, for that. And additionally, we also have a third feature available that can currently otherwise only be achieved by manually setting up web services, is that groups can be created automatically based on courses in the learning management system. And those are all the things that I want to show you now in the next few minutes. Okay, so I've got my course in Brightspace here. Currently, I'm logged in as an administrator, but you could also log in as an instructor. And so I've just talked about the three different things that we have in LTI Advantage. That is kind of the normal login. Then um, there is the so-called NRPS, or we call it NURPS, because in New Zealand, kind of, you try to spell abbreviations nicely. Um, that means names and roles, name and role provisioning service, which essentially is that part that we need to set up a group automatically based on a course in the LMS and also take the course enrollments along and also keep those course enrollments updated. So if an instructor clicks that link here, um, they will create the group in Mahara on the fly. And of course, they'll also be logged in. So just showing that right now. So we now have our course, which is called New Features Course Morning um, set up. And in a few minutes, we will also have the members in here. So I had already set that up earlier for some testing. And so that's why you see the new features course um, one here. And so while it is turning through this, this morning course, because it takes a few minutes for the con to run through, I can show you a couple of things on this course. And um, that is that we, that instructors from, from Brightspace become group administrators. Anybody set up as t um, teaching assistant becomes the tutor and regular students become members in that uh, group. And once a day early in the morning, that group membership is updated. Um, if the uh, um, if anything changes in the uh, in the course on the LMS side. Now, yesterday, um, I also logged in with the, in, into Mahara with this account, and there were a couple of different courses there on the right hand side: New Features Course Midday and New Features Course Evening. But I don't see those here on my list anymore, and that is a really really fantastic. Um, a side effect of this uh, feature that that we've discovered um, together with Ellie. And um, that is that um, when you are an administrator in the LMS or kind of a person who does have access to a course and therefore kind of also has inherent instructor permissions in there, um, but they are not enrolled in the course, they get access to the group in Mahara temporarily when they click that um, NURPS link. But on the next cron run, because they are not a member of the course, are removed again. And so that is really, really cool because then the administrators for Mahara do not have to enroll themselves in every single group on the Mahara site when they need to um, give, uh, when they need to troubleshoot something because they are only in those groups temporarily. They are automatically enrolled as uh, group administrators can see everything, but the next day it goes off their list again. 
and therefore, as uh, Ellie writes in the chat, it's really nice to not have a million courses um, on her My Groups list. And that is a wonderful side effect because um, that's not quite happening so much if you were to use regular web services, um, because then you would always have to be enrolled in the course or in the group or go through that manually and make you a member of the group so that you can then be an administrator. And um, the other thing, the other nice thing of course is as well that groups are only created if an instructor adds this NURPS link into their course and clicks that. Um, because otherwise, we can just use a regular authentication link um, called basic auth um, that students can use, that instructors can use as well. But if there is that um, special kind of uh, feature tagged for the names and role provisioning service, then a group can be set up. But in contrast to web services where you kind of set up a group for each course, you avoid all of those shell, uh, shell groups in Mahara that may never ever be used only because the system thinks um, they have to be set up. Now, what does that look like on the student front? Now I'm logged in as a student and there I can use the Mahara student login And if my account isn't already created, I can create it or yeah, it is being created automatically. And now you see on the right hand side, I'm automatically a member of that group because by now, I've been talking long enough, by now all my group members have automatically made it into this group in Mahara. So here we've got the instructors as admin. Currently, I am listed as admin because I'm in there temporarily. Um, then we've got the tutors and we have the group members. So we are all set up to use that group for template creation and automatically roll templates out to students without requiring them to first log in. And that is where the names and roles provisioning service comes in so handily because you can prepare all of that, create your templates, copy them into student accounts and don't have to wait for everybody to log in first. So let me quickly create a portfolio or check if I have one available that I can submit. That is not the case. So kind of I just create a portfolio the normal way as a learner because now I'm just in my Mahara account. And I can either create a page or a collection. And then when I go back to the learning management system side, um, here in this course in Brightspace, we set up an assignment. And that is a normal Brightspace assignment. Um, in this case, the, the important thing is to choose the text submission because what um, we can do is then include a so-called quick link. And that is a link using the deep link functionality from LTI Advantage, displaying all my portfolios that I have available my pages and or collections if I have any. And it only shows me the ones that can actually be submitted. You would have seen here on my pages and collections overview page that my internship and my learning were yellow and that means they were still being submitted or in the process of being released. And so they are of course not available for, for, another, um, fact, uh, for another assignment. So I can choose this one. And at the moment, um, the decision was made that for, for this first uh, proof of concept, that we are um, automatically archiving portfolios when they are being released. 
rather than kind of giving the, uh, teachers the choice like we currently do in the Mahara Assignment Submission Plugin in Moodle, um, or also when you use LTI 1.1 through the external tool functionality. And um, just to make it a bit easier um, so that it is very quick for a teacher to set up the assignment in Brightspace because really they don't have to do any decision making, any custom thing. All they need to know is uh, my assignment needs to have a text submission. There is no extra link that they would need to provide because um, everything is handled via the quick link option where the site administrator would have made the uh, uh, deep link available to the portfolio. And of course, it doesn't have to be called deep link, just here that um, I can find it more easily. Okay, and so I can now as, um, oops, as instructor, I can go to my assignments. and can review it. I've got the text assignment from that one student. View the submission. And because it's a text submission, the, the text is displayed here on screen. And of course, in my case, the text only includes the link. So I've got the link to my externship and it uh, the system authenticates me and I see the portfolio for the student. Now, because we um, didn't want to make any changes to the learning management system, what is being done here is when the instructor finished reviewing the portfolio, they would click release portfolio or release page in this case here. And what then do their overall feedback in uh, Brightspace, including any rubrics or anything else that they want to do. So the, the grading in this case on the Brightspace end is completely independent from Mahara um, because if we had wanted to um, put that together, that would have required changes to Brightspace um, because then we would have kind of needed to um, tie in with that publish button and that was out of scope for this project. So what we were looking at is what can we do just by making changes in Mahara and therefore that is one of the aspects that is kept separate. So they would publish the grade here and then all they still need to make sure that they can release the page. And now one thing that will also help all of you that cannot yet use LTI Advantage is that there is a new ad, uh, site administrator option available under groups where we, have, where we used to have uh, archived submissions. There is now also current submissions and we might actually just put that all together in one menu item. And that then shows to me all the submissions that are currently active. So those that haven't been released yet, I can click them, release them, and therefore kind of handing them back to the student. Say they submitted the wrong portfolio to the assignment or they need to, um, need to work on something else before the teacher kind of um, looks at the assessment part. And so we do have the possibility to revoke that um, portfolio submission here from the administration screen. And that also goes for all the submissions made to a group in Mahara. So not just for LTI advantage, but also anything that has been submitted to a group. Therefore giving an administrator the, the possibility to kind of help students out um, in quickly if needed. And then of course for LTI Advantage, we automatically also archive things. And those things are being seen in the archived submissions. And uh, as usual, the archive files can be downloaded. 
And so those were the LTI Advantage uh, functionalities that we have available. Namely, that we can just log out of here in case I need to go back as site administrator. Namely, that we can authenticate from the LMS into Mahara. We can bring course information and course enrollment along on the fly, on demand. And we can um, use it for assignment submission, um, ensuring that we only link the portfolio into the assignment, but perform all the grading on the LMS, because what a lot of people have told us is that they very much want to have the feedback in the LMS, work with the rubrics there, and therefore that is facilitated through LTI Advantage. Now, um, there are a lot of back, uh, bug fixes made in Mahara and also some other new features that I haven't talked about um, that you can check out on your own if you like. And um, one thing I do want to say for the, for the future of Mahara is that we are looking into supporting PHP 8. Um, that is quite, quite a change in um, in the technology, lots of advancements were made and lots of changes were made. So something that was done in PHP 7 this way is now done in PHP 8 in a completely, completely different way. And so what we are going to do over the next few months is to look at how we can support PHP 8 at least minimally um, so that we can have um, about one version of Mahara where we still support PHP 7, but if somebody is on PHP 8, they can already use it, but not make use of all the new fancy features that it comes with. But then at some point, like we have done in the past with when we switched from PHP 5.6 to PHP 7, that at some point um, organizations would need to switch to PHP 8 because also PHP 7 um, runs out of support by the end of next year in November. And so we will provide more information because currently we are at the investigation stage uh, trying to figure out um, what, are, what all the changes are, which of our third party libraries in particular already support PHP 8 because if our libraries don't support it, we can't really switch unless we make um, changes ourselves because everything of course needs to work with it. And then at some point, of course, also look into, well, how can we make use or have to make use of the new features? So one thing for, for everybody currently still using MNET um, in Moodle, connecting Moodle and Mahara, um, we will pay particular attention to that because the underlying protocol XML RPC is not available per default anymore in PHP 8 and would need to be compiled manually, which I'm told is, is quite, uh, quite the undertaking. And therefore, we will look into, well, what does P uh, moving to PHP 8 mean for all of those Moodle Mahara connections that still use MNET? Um, if they can't use it, can we provide easy migration path um, or can we just provide uh, steps because certain Certain connections with MNET are easier to migrate than others. Um, and so we, we will look into that over the next few months so that um, you have a better understanding and um, have a, know what is coming to you and when, that might, uh, when you might need to expect that so that you can also prepare for that switch over. So there will be comes in the forums. So please watch out for anything in the news forum, but also in the developer forum, because it is a very technical level. So we might um, post in there as well. But now we still have um, a good uh, 10 minutes time for any questions that you may have. Um, you are very welcome to just activate your microphone, unmute yourself, or if you don't have a microphone, also post your questions in the chat. Uh, 